Hey, we're back. <laughs> um, welcome back to my garden. Today's uh, film is going to be a opportunity to learn a little bit about the relevance of the spring equinox, which is upcoming this week. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, we are transitioning out of winter and into the longer, lighter days of summer. And in the Southern Hemisphere, conversely, on the other side of the world, uh, obviously um, our friends on that side of the earth will be transitioning out of their summer and into the winter and so the equinox is the quarter point where the balance of light and dark are equal. So uh, for me this has always been a power of powerful time of year for invocation and ritual although I think all times of the year are powerful times of the year for invocation and ritual um, to set our intentions and um, quite simply to tune into what's going on in our environment what the energies are that are playing out what the natural world is doing and since we are a part of the natural world if we start to behave in a similar way if we start to follow the flow of the natural world um, we're kind of moving with the path of least effort uh, we're taking advantage of the opportunities which are there for us um, to grow and to evolve and to change um, you know in an integrated way so for me um, I have recognized a few things going on in my personal life that uh, needed some commitment and determination to resolve um, perhaps all of us can go through a little bit of a phase of being a little bit of a ostrich with the head in the sand and um, if a situation isn't critical maybe it's tolerable maybe it's not ideal but um, it can be a bit tempting to uh, ignore things and allow them to drift and so there's one or two things in my personal life that I needed to address and yesterday was a real day of grounded commitment uh, what uh, is it that I believe I want uh, get get clear about it and how am I going to focus my energies to support that outcome to come into being I can't say it was easy it was pretty activating I had some emotional um, responses there's uh, all kinds of reasons why we stay stuck all kinds of reasons why we don't make our moves so I had to breathe through all of those kinds of things yesterday and then this morning I felt that I got a really strong confirmation from the universe that things were going to fall into place and what that looked like is that my postal delivery has been delayed for some time and it, uh, it transpires that the Amazon man has been or the Amazon person has been putting the parcels and deliveries in an outbuilding somewhere and I don't know where because I've checked all my outbuildings and I can't find my stuff and so for a week or two the mystery is is playing out where the stuff has got to and at the same time in my personal process I'm working on a layer of myself where I haven't quite allowed myself to open up to receiving as much as perhaps I could and so there it is in the world I'm making my orders and they're lost in space and then this morning after doing my ritual work yesterday after making my commitments to myself um, a chap comes up the drive literally laden with uh, all kinds of exciting things and in that um, the first thing that I opened was a beautiful bunch of flowers which came with a message of love and the message was to have a beautiful and loving week in the run-up to the spring equinox and I thought absolutely touched beyond words by that so um, the second parcel I opened up was a long-awaited item from eBay which is this beautiful top and I ordered it from a lady last week who um, actually ended up having to go to hospital she was in poor health it didn't get posted it didn't concern me I was more concerned for her health and for my top but today the beautiful top arrived with a note from the lady saying that she's recovered her health as well so that felt like a real yes that felt like a real tick that felt like a real um, uh, celebration 
And the final parcel that I opened up is a little stone statue of a goddess called Shila Nagig. Now, I don't know how many of you will have encountered Shila Nagig. Hoping that the sound is recording okay. Can't see the light on it, but this is the beautiful Shilana Gig, and she has been a part of the Celtic traditions of the British Isles, traced back to the 11th century, traced back quite a long way. Let's put her packaging away. Um, usually found carved into stones, um, which are in sacred spiritual sites, dominantly in Ireland, but not only in Ireland, also um, in uh, Britain and Wales and, and Norway. Um, a lot of um, interpretation has been put on Shilana Gig as to what she represents, why she was used, why such a graphic image of this older woman. She's usually understood to be an older woman, obviously parting the lips of the vulva, and um, she's often in places of um, ceremonial work. Um, some people have interpreted this as being a warning, a warning against sexual vulgarity, all kinds of things have gone on. I need to take a breath into that. It occurs to me that the most appropriate way to get to know anybody is to spend time with them. And I don't think that the goddesses or the spiritual um, entities and energies are any different to that. So if I want to know something about a archetype of a goddess, I spend time with her and I spend time meditating upon her properties, upon the aspects of her being and uh, perhaps that involves dancing, perhaps that involves singing. Um, it's an invitation for her energies to merge with my own and then I can have a personal embodied interpretation of what it is that that particular archetype means. So. Um, when it comes to Shilana Gig, the um, uh, possibility is that our first introduction to her comes in through the mind. It's what we see and what we make it mean. Uh, obviously, we're living in a society that isn't greatly integrated with uh, female sexuality or indeed sexuality in general. There's a lot of repression and denial around that. So having such a so-called vulgar, or shall we call it vulva imagery, um, could be quite challenging for some people. But when I have danced with Sheila Nagig and I am um, open to receiving her messages um, energetically, what I really got in touch with was that this was a pose of demonstrating receptivity. And there's an ability in our bodies, regardless of whether we're in female bodies, male bodies, non-binary bodies, whichever body we occupy, we have the capability to be able to draw in cosmic energies, to be able to draw in etheric energies, certain energies, and move them through our body and into the world. Our bodies essentially are a conduit between the non-visible etheric spiritual realms and the apparently physical and uh, manifest world of the earth. And so this being an older woman, we can start to assume that this demonstration isn't about childbirth per se, although it may have been used as a way of encouraging somebody to open naturally, to open to bringing life into the world. Um, but if it was about the mother phase of the goddess, uh, more likely it would have been a younger woman that was depicted. So really we're starting to look into the characteristics, the skills and the capabilities of the um, crone phase, the so-called crone phase, the third phase of womanhood, um, which is our psychic powers, our innate wisdom, our capability to be able to draw knowledge from um, the original World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> before we invented our little local internet, the actual cosmic web um, of existence and um, the uh, traditional uh, societies, um, you know, even one or two hundred years ago in this country, pre-technology, pre you know, pre-industrialization in this country as well, um, had a great reverence for the elders, had a great respect for people who had grown old, um, it wasn't just uh, in admiration of their survival skills. 
it was because they had accumulated a certain amount of gravitas, a certain amount of, of weight, uh, a gravity of being. And, and, and often the wisdom of the elders is felt rather than spoken. They're often uh, quieter, maybe just sitting by the fire knitting, maybe just sitting by the fire carving, whittling a little piece of wood. And in the simplicity of the task, their presence can be felt. And the presence, if the life has been well lived, it, it carries a, a, a vibration of knowing. Um, there's all kinds of characteristics which can be beneficial from spending time with those who have gone before. So those are a few reflections um, upon what the energy of Shilana Gig um, brings to me at this phase in my process. Um, perhaps in other phases of my process, if I dance with her again, um, if I sing with her in the woods again, I'll find other aspects of this archetype that come to the forefront. But for the time being, my um, uh, journey is drawing me into a more relaxed and open capability to receive, to receive obviously in the physical, in the form of the Amazon puzzles, hooray, <laughs> but also to receive acknowledgements and, um, you know, all of these other um, social aspects of being really willing to be seen in the world and really we willing to show up in the world. So thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me wishing you the most beautiful um, spring equinox towards the end of this week and um, I'd love to hear about any reflections that you have on working with the goddess, on working with the feminine archetypes or indeed any archetypes which have been influential to you in your process. So let's take a few breaths with our friend, balance her on my knee. I open up my breath in my body the wind just came and met me in a most celebratory way and it just feels like there's an abundance available to us in any moment just waiting for us to say yes and the quality of invitation for me is gratitude so I started my invocation my prayer with thank you thank you for all that I've received and may yet still be on its way to me I'm totally feeling open, soft, excited energy right down the front of my body. Breathing in and out through my mouth just to make it even more um, confident, even more exuberant, even more enthusiastic. <laughs> Blessed be, thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you on the next film.